Hey guys, uh, thanks George for having me down. Um, I think I need to start by apologizing for my voice. Uh, I didn't go out last night, I promise. Uh, I was recently in uh, Central America for a holiday and uh, went volcano boarding, which is great, but uh, inhaled a lot of uh, volcanic dust and stones. So it's not contagious. So if you see me afterwards and you want to talk to me, you don't have to stand far away. We can, uh, we, can, we can be closer than that. But I apologize if uh, I start having a coughing fit or uh, the codeine kicks in and I um, start drooling. <coughs> um, so my name's Ian. I work uh, at Google, which is great. And I work in a team called The Zoo, which is even better. Uh, we're an internal creative department uh, that helps Google's brands and agencies, uh, sorry, brands and clients and agencies do better work with uh, Google. I wanted to quickly talk through um, some of the things, what we are basically, some of the things we've worked on in the last year, and then wrap up by talking through the process that we use to identify opportunities, uh, how we solve problems for businesses, and then how we, uh, how we help agencies execute that stuff. So what is Google Zoo? Uh, as I said, we're a, a little internal creative department within Google. Um, I get this question a lot, so I should be better at answering it, but in the typical Google way, we, uh, we like to iterate a lot, so it's changed a few times since I've been, <coughs> been at Google. Uh, currently, we're called a creative think tank for brands and agencies, which is uh, basically what I think when I see that, is what the fuck does that mean? Uh, it's twofold. <coughs> we explore creative uses of Google's tools, services, and platforms, and then we help agencies and brands be more successful in digital space. It's basically the same thing, because we can't do one without the other. Uh, a nice to scale map, thanks to my designer. We, uh, the team that I look after works uh, in Tokyo, Singapore, and Sydney. Uh, we're about 19 strong in that area. Uh, globally, we're about 200, but as you can see, we're kind of like down here on the bottom of the world, so we can be a bit cheeky and do stuff that the other guys can't. We're about six people uh, in Sydney, which is great. So what's an advertising creative doing at a technology company, which is the second question I usually get, um, and it's a good one. Uh, we watch a lot of YouTube videos, which is kind of what we're doing in the creative space, uh, which is great. Uh, but basically, we help brands tell their story uh, using technology, which is kind of a good thing. Advertising is dead, long live the idea. I hate these kind of comments, uh, basically because they're supposed to be controversial and get in uh, media. Hope there's no journos here, are there? That would be bad. Um, basically, this, this is kind of sums up part of the reason I left uh, working as an advertising creative and went to Google. It basically, it's, it's about the diversification of ideas. It's where the idea comes from isn't really that important. Clients are, are spreading out. There's a lot more agencies. There's a lot of boutique agencies out there now. Where the idea comes from isn't as important as how you bring that to life and what the idea is. And I have the luxury of working across pretty much every client that works with Google, um, which is most of them. Uh, and then also being able to walk into to most places and, and getting a positive reaction, which is not something that happens a lot in advertising anymore. Fun fact, uh, most of, or well, half of creative jobs now are actually in the, uh, in the space outside of creative uh, industries, which is great. Um, that's not me looking for a job in a startup. I'm actually pretty happy. Uh, but there are a lot of, uh, there's a big change from 2010, uh, which was only 30%. So, yeah. Um, technology, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I look at technology as a creative now, not as like this thing that we want to use every day. I think it's, it's more about a new medium that we can play in. There's still the, still the core insight that you have to have. You still have to have a, a human insight uh, to, to lead off before you start charging into execution. And I think that's part of the reason that a place like Google was hiring uh, creative, creative people. We basically have the ability to look at a problem and figure out what the core hole is that you're not thinking about and how do we, how do we make that work. And we've kind of played across the board in different technologies. We still do this, the traditional sort of writing um, scripts for hype reels and content pieces and that kind of thing. But usually, uh, we like to play in the more uh, utility side of things. Having said that, let's show you some of the work we've done. This technically actually isn't something I did while at the zoo. Uh, my creative partner and I, this was the last thing we did before we left uh, Saatchi and Saatchi when we came to the zoo. I uh, put this in here sneakily, because I think it's, it's, it's a great piece of work, um, is because it kind of shows the utility that we were sort of thinking in and probably why we were attractive to something like Google. We like to do things that don't just tell a story, they actually have a, a, a use. Uh, it gives people and consumers a, a, 
experience of the brand beyond just a message that they're being drilled on. So. Over 40% of mums have never thought to take their child for an eye test. So OPSM created Penny the Pirate, the bedtime story that helps parents screen their child's vision as they read to them. Available as a book and tablet storybook app, Penny the Pirate follows the journey of a young girl as she tries to become captain of the mighty pickle. She has to plunder treasure, read the captain's log and spot sails in the distance to prove she's a worthy leader of this brutish bunch of pirates. With the help of children's author illustrator Kevin Waldron and the Department of Optometry and Vision Sciences at the University of Melbourne, this story took clinical eye tests and turned them into an illustrated children's book to help parents get a better understanding of their child's eye health. The story is also being used by OPSM's charity OneSight, reaching children in need across Australia. OPSM is rolling out the book and app across its store network, as well as in schools and in libraries. So by turning an eye screening into a story, this could be the most important thing you read with your child. So yeah, like something that I was really happy and proud to be part of because it wasn't just like, hey, buy more glasses for your kids. It was kind of something that helped people do and experience the brand and their brand values uh, and actually get something out of it at the end of the day. Pedigree Found, um, this is a great example of how we collaborate with creative agencies. Uh, we, and we, we get a lot of uh, early iteration uh, products and platforms and new features and that kind of thing, a lot earlier than most people find out about it. So we have the luxury of like taking what that could be, playing with it, and then taking it to a creative agency and saying, hey, what do you think about this? And it's exactly what happened with this. Um, we took it to a, a, an update to the GDN network and the way that we roll out uh, creative across that. And it basically changed from 15 minutes down to seconds. So it was, what, what, what time does it matter? Like seconds count. Uh, and Pedigree was the perfect client for it. And Colenso did a great job of pulling this together and they made a great campaign. Losing your dog is a heartbreaking ordeal, which is why we created Pedigree Found, the free lost dog alert that moves faster than your dog without the cost or complexity of a GPS tag. You just register your dog with Found, and then, if they ever go missing, you simply push one button. Within seconds, thousands of lost dog alerts are posted across mobile ads in a two and a half kilometer radius, activating an army of scouts that will get your dog home safely and quickly. Missing dog posters and neighborhood flyers have long been the way to let locals know you've lost your pooch. Now a new smartphone app aims to do the same thing. So this technology is really uh, world first in terms of utilizing our Google Display Network as well as Dynamic Creative to deliver a real-time message in a very finite location or using geolocation targeting. It's the first of its kind globally and we're hoping it's just the start of many more to come. So this goes way beyond just creating an app. Working with Google, we're developing a new way to use display advertising that can combine uh, the buying power of Mars with real-time geotargeted communications to help solve deeply personal, localized problems. I actually skipped results because it's an old case study and I know the guys are going to show an updated one this afternoon um, at the panel, so I'd urge you to go along to that and check it out because it, uh, it's a really interesting um, project and something that people should know about. Um, finally, this is a project out of our Tokyo team. Um, I thought I'd show you something a little bit straighter and more retail-y. It's uh, for Lux Sakura, a uh, limited edition body wash with cherry blossoms in it. So we were tasked with the, the brief to come up with something that would uh, use a, a, like Google Street View uh, and the depth API for that. Uh, and I think it's, it's just really interesting. I'll, I'll play the case study, but the best part about it was at the end of the experience, you could um, choose the place that you wanted uh, cherry blossoms to be planted on a street. Uh, and then they were going to plant the trees. And the client actually axed that part of it. And then because people were so into it, they've actually brought it back. And I think yesterday I saw a photo on Instagram, one of the creatives up there, and they're actually at, the f at the, uh, one of the tree places uh, and, and picking the trees out, which is great. So they're going to roll that out really soon. 
I apologize if the voiceover is hard to Rainbow Sakura or Sakura is a national symbol of Japanese beauty. In spring 2015, we launched our limited edition Sakura variant with Lux Sakura Dream, a Google Street View hack that makes cherry blossom trees magically bloom anywhere in the world with the use of emerging WebGL technology. Nearly 1 million people experienced the site in the first month with 25% of users returning and then spending up to 15 minutes creating scenes. The product sold out in the first week and Love for Sakura Dream spread outside of Japan to the rest of the world. Lux Sakura Dream has pushed the boundaries of what Chrome can do on mobile. With seamless and artful technology, this truly Japanese experience has in a small way made the world a more beautiful place. So if you, if you couldn't catch that because the voice servers are muffled, um, basically it was using WebGL. Uh, and some part of what happens on Street View is there's a LiDAR on the top which actually captures the depth data. So we can use that um, sparingly uh, to uh, create things like this. There was recently one, I think last year, they did with uh, floodwaters rising in streets as well, which was actually, I think, probably a better one, but uh, quite cool as well, where you could see the street level, uh, the, the level of water would be after um, the, the ice caps had melted, which is a very cool use. Um, so I've got nine minutes left to go through how we work and our process, which I thought might be kind of useful. Obviously, it's, you have to take that and change it to how that might work for you. Um, but this is an overly simplified version of it. We start by finding the opportunities uh, and then solving the problem, the business problem within that opportunity, selling the, uh, the idea then to the client through the creative agency, and then helping to execute that. So starting with identifying the opportunity. You're probably all familiar uh, with the Google X uh, moonshot thinking Venn diagram about huge problems, <coughs> radical solutions, and breakthrough technology. We try and do the same thing, but just at a smaller scale, because obviously a lot of brands don't have that kind of money to throw around. Um, but we try and find a, a business problem that's worth tackling uh, and then adding a radical solution uh, and then with a, some kind of technology element, usually a Google platform or product. Um, we also, sorry, just to go back, we, uh, because we're such a small team, we have a really uh, in-depth filter and triage process because there's so many opportunities out there <coughs> and every client wants to do something, um, particularly with Google, we have to be very careful about the opportunities that we take on because if you start going down a track and you spend a lot of money and time and effort on something and then it falls over because of lack of budget or the scope's not quite enough or the timings weren't good enough, you've wasted a ton of time. But because we're only six people, it's better off to identify that stuff up front. So we're pretty ruthless. Um, doesn't make us a lot of friends within the sales teams at Google, but what it does do is mean that the projects we work on usually get up and they're usually pretty cool. So um, be, be very uh, strict and, and ruthless at that point. Um, then we try and solve the problem. So after, after we found it, we do a bit of digging, we get our strategy guys involved. They take a brief from the client and the creative agency. We work together to come up with a solution or we try to, uh, and we, we typically uh, throw a bunch of ideas around, and sometimes they look like this. The world's first crowdsourced 3D printed QR code live stream via GoPro to a smartphone or tablet device drone delivery ticket system project. So you just hashtag that simple. simple. Then you geotag where you are located, then the drone will... F but we, we try, to, try to not do that stuff. I love that video, by the way, it's great. Um, it's really easy as a tech company, especially Google, because you're, you're drinking from a fire hose. There's so much cool stuff coming out all the time, not to just slap a bunch of really cool tech on something and go, what do you think of this? Um, it doesn't work. Uh, there's no magic bullet. There's no, there's no uh, chuck a wearable on it, and suddenly everyone's going to be happy or whatever it is. Um, so we, we try and now use things like the Gartner's hype cycle, which if you're not familiar with, you should be. Uh, it's, it's a great example of how technology goes, uh, everyone's like, yeah, tech, it's great. And then sort of the reality of whatever it is doesn't really pack out or pan out, and then it comes back up and you get this. Also, any graph that has the word trough in it is pretty cool. Um, this, I like, I like using this as an example, because things like, I love wearables, but I know most people out there haven't quite got there yet, so it's a great place to play now for when that drops out and comes back up. Um, so typically when we're exploring solutions for things, we try and do things that most people have access to or have the ability to access. Um, so something like <coughs> the, the found example was using a mobile app. Like that's pretty simple to download and get involved with. Something like um, we use it, we're doing a lot of stuff now with Bluetooth, uh, low energy Bluetooth beacons, uh, with NFC. NFC is a tricky one because it's kind of half of uh, mobile devices don't really like it which turns it off for a lot of people, but as Google and Android, we can get away with it. 
Um, and we're doing a lot of things with geolocation and Chrome as well, because that being a pretty large market share with Chrome. Another thing to look at is whether you're augmenting the experience or overcomplicating it. Uh, it's, it's easy. I love using the analogy of the, uh, the NASA pen. They spent millions of dollars on uh, creating this pen that would work in zero gravity, and the Russians are just like, well, we'll use a pencil. It's way easier. I hate that it's not a real story. I wish it was, um, unfortunately. But we, we often do that as well. We'll be like, what if we took this thing and we put a whole bunch of cool tech in it, and suddenly you can monitor your heart rate through a an eye patch it doesn't it doesn't really work um, so just be very aware of making sure you're you're actually helping the process or making it easier or augmenting the experience rather than overcomplicating it now you've come up with a great solution or we hope you have um, and then we have to try and sell that idea through the agency to the brand so hopefully um, everyone's been on board from the start they've kind of you run a lot of uh, little workshops and kept everyone up to date with how, how you're progressing and kept everyone interested, giving them little teasers if you need to. Um, so they're at the point where they're really excited to see what you've got. How do you do that? Uh, prototyping, prototyping, pretzel, pretzel typing is not actually a thing. I just put that in because I needed three. Um, I don't like terms like this. It's really frustrating when you walk into a client or an agency and they're like, yeah, let's do a prototype. You don't need to do a prototype every time. It's actually better if you really think about who you're talking to so who your audience is and, and the best way to explain the idea. Uh, so there's hype reels, you can do proof of concept videos. The most important thing is actually working out if it works or not, if it's a viable product uh, or a viable um, platform. So we do a lot of research with different vendors around whether or not the idea is actually gonna work in the, the minimal viable product that we're actually talking about. Um, so that brings me to my next point, who is actually gonna do the prototyping, pretzel typing, whatever you're talking about? We have a rather large uh, library of friends who help us do the stuff that we come up with. Most of them um, like us, but then some of us, some of them are like, how do you keep bringing us these crazy ideas? Um, I think it's really important to talk to people who are specialists in whatever the field is you're working on, whether it's Bluetooth, you go to the Bluetooth specialist. If it's, um, if it's the Maps guys, we've got them internally, so we're pretty fine. Whatever it is, you want to talk to the guys who are actually ultimately going to end up building it as well, because it puts the onus on them to do due diligence in the early stages of the development. In terms of who pays for it, uh, we're lucky in that we have a production budget uh, to spend on building these kinds of things to get buy-in from a client later on down the, down the road. So we use that sparingly because we'd rather spend it on some of the bigger projects. Uh, but obviously this comes down to IP issues, it comes down to your contracts and um, retainers and stuff like that. So obviously take that into account. Yay, you sold the idea. Well, we sold the idea. Um, now you have to deliver it. Typically we'll stand back, uh, Tara and I, our creative partner, we'll, we'll stand back at this, at this point and hand it over to uh, the creative agency to execute what that idea looks like, feels like, how people interact with it, that, that kind of thing. Um, there are always going to be niggly little problems along the way. Hopefully if you've done a good job of managing expectations with the client up to this point, they're gonna be kind of on board with how that develops across the, across the time frame, but there are always gonna be problems, um, but that's why we have producers to sort that stuff out, which is great. Congratulations, um, we made something, which is great. <laughs> like how that S has dropped off. Um, it's, it's a good feeling when you finally get it out, so stick to it, stick to your guns, get it out there, and work, work hard on the early stages so that when you get to this point, it actually does feel like you've, you've actually achieved something and you haven't watered down a really cool project or, or um, product. Thanks.